Hey everyone, so as many already know, um, if you're fishing for salmon or trout, spoon fishing can be very effective because the spoon imitates little bait fish, little salmon fry, little sculpin, or anything that swims in water. Uh, so if you're fishing a lake, you can simply cast and retrieve a spoon and the fish will chase behind it and bite onto it. But if you're fishing in a river like this, where the, there's a bit of a moderate flow, uh, spoon fishing can be pretty challenging because the river is pretty snaggy, it's pretty shallow, and then you also have the current involved in it. Uh, so in this video tutorial, we're going to show you how to fish with a spoon in a river like this um, without getting snagged and also catch fish at the same time. So, like I say, fishing the run here, there's a bit of a flow, there's, there's some current to it. Um, the river is about two, three feet deep, maybe a little more. Um, there's lots of little rocks, but also bigger boulders, so it's very, the bottom contour is very uneven. So if you cast a spoon now, if you come here, simply cast and retrieve, what's going to happen is, if you retrieve too slowly, uh, the spoon's going to sink down to the bottom, it's going to be quite heavy, and you're going to bump into rocks, and occasionally you're going to get snagged, unfortunately. But if you retrieve too fast, um, the current's going to push against the action of the spoon, and it's gonna bring that spoon up to the top of the water. And that's gonna keep you away from the fish and then you won't be catching any fish. So you kinda of have to find that fine balance. And so casting or retrieving spoon without any additional help can be quite challenging and it takes years of practice to get used to it. Uh, but the easier way to do this is to fish with a float. So float fishing is very common in rivers because you can present your, your whatever you're using um, under the water without worrying about getting snagged, as long as you have the depth right. So because we're fishing around, like I say, roughly between two and four feet deep, uh, that's how deep my float is, it's about three feet, four feet. And um, at the end of the fishing line, I have a spoon tied onto it. So this is a gypsy, uh, or the Gibbs gypsy spoon. It's not a casting spoon like a, gyp, uh, like a Gibbs croc. Um, it's, a, it's a trolling spoon. So a trolling spoon, it's very, very thin, therefore it's very, very light. It weighs almost nothing. Um, this is mostly used for trolling in a lake for kokanee, for trout, um, under, on a downrigger or with some additional weight to it. Uh, because there's no weight to this, you need some weight to balance the float. So this is my weight right here. So this is a, about a, a foot and a half above the spoon. I have a sliding weight that sits on top of a swivel so that's going to be my weight to balance the float. Uh, so the amount of weight I use, it's enough to balance this float. I want my float to be submerged in the water with only the top part, the orange part, showing on top of the water. So this is your bite indicator. So when this orange part disappears in the water, goes on the water, that's when you know I have a fish on. That's when you set the hook and hopefully the fish stays on as well. Um, so presenting your, float, uh, your spoon under the float, it's quite different to presenting your, uh, your bait under the float. Uh, so the, the way there's two, two or three different ways of fishing it. And I'm gonna go out there and demonstrate how to do that. I can see a few salmon rolling out there, the mostly, most likely pink salmon. So I'm getting pretty excited. And uh, let's get out there and try to do it. Okay, so this looks pretty good here. Um, normally, I don't walk out into the middle of the river uh, because you want to try to stay on dry land as much as possible. You don't, anytime you walk into the river, there's a fish right there. Anytime you walk in the river, you start spooking fish. Um, but because this run is quite wide and the first half of the run is pretty shallow, it doesn't really have any fish going through it, it would just be easier for, for me to walk out a little bit. And uh, that, you know, if the drift is a little shorter, it's easier to do so. So like I say, presenting a spoon is quite different to um, if you're fishing bait. Uh, if you're fishing bait, you simply cast out and let the float freely drifting down the um, river without any resistance from you. So that way your, your, your bait is flowing down with, with the speed of the current. Um, so it looks very, very natural. But with a spoon, um, if you do that, it's, uh, I mean, you can, you can catch fish like that, but um, there, there are better ways of doing it. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. So the very first way I'll show you, I'm gonna just 
just a little shallower. Now, the, the, the float depth, it, it's tricky. Um, there's no one set depth that works really well. So you have to constantly kind of keep an eye on the depth. Um, just keep an eye how your float is reacting. Um, if you're fishing too deep and the, the hook is, is, you know, bouncing on the bottom, then the float's going to go down like that. And that's not what you want. If, that's, if you're doing that, you got to, you know, make your float depth shallower and that, was, that should stop it. But if you're fishing too shallow, um, you won't be getting any fish, so you gotta, then you gotta lengthen your depth as well. So just keep, kinda keep playing with it until you get it right. Um, I'm just gonna start around two and a half feet, around that depth. Um, so the very first thing I'll do is, you can, you can cast your rig out to the upstream from you. So now it's going, it's upstream, and as it comes downstream, what's gonna happen is your line's gonna get slack, because um, it's, the float's coming back towards you. So when that happens, you just retrieve that slack as quickly as you can without disturbing the float. And what, what you're doing is, you're letting that spoon flutter in the water freely, just kind of doing that in the water, and that can sometimes trigger bites like that. Works very well for coho, works very well for steelhead. Um, it looks like a, um, looks like a salmon fry or any trout fry that's struggling, you know, like that. It's kind of half dead, just drift, freely drifting down the river. So we're gonna do that a few times. So just slowly retrieve and pick up that slack. If you, if you retrieve too much, what's gonna happen is you're gonna pull the float back towards you and that's not what you want. Okay, so that's one way of doing it. The other way is if you cast in front of you or just above you, pick up any slack you have first. And as the float starts drifting down the river, um, you're gonna have to feed some line to it because, because then otherwise the float will come right back to you. But instead of letting so much, lots of line out, just keep letting, like that one I'm doing right now, just keep letting line out. That means the float is actually freely drifting down the river. You would do that for bay fishing, but for swim fishing, what I like to do is to actually put a little bit of resistance to it. So we're using a bay caster right here. So if you put, a, put your thumb on it, just let us slow down that line feed. What's gonna happen is, let me show you right here. What's gonna happen is, you're gonna put a bit of resistance to the float without bringing the float back towards you. And because there's a bit of tension onto, on the line, what's gonna happen is the spoon, the, the, the little, my, my little light, oh, that was a bite. <laughs> I, was, I, I was looking this way, I totally missed it. So what's gonna happen is my light casting spoon is gonna be uh, drifting further down uh, then the then the weight because you're putting some resistance resistance to it, so that it's it's almost like trolling, so it's going to be doing that um, as it goes down. So that looks like a little fish swimming and kind of backing up. And if if there are salmon in the stream, a lot of time what, what happens with trout is they'll they'll swim in the water, they'll swim back and then go back behind the salmon and want to they want to feed on the eggs, and that kind of really aggravates. Um, aggravates the sand because nobody wants their eggs to be eaten, right? So, let's do that again, see if we can trigger another bite. So we're just gonna put a bit of resistance to the line. So now that it's, the spoon is backing up, backing up. Yeah, for sure that was a bite. Um, you can tell because that time the float didn't go down, so he's not hitting the bottom. And uh, just the, the way it's going, it went down, it just looked like a bite to me. So you can do this, you don't, you don't have to do this just with spoons, you can do this with the light spinner as well. So with the light spinner, um, you, can, you can let it drift, slow it down, put a bit of resistance to it and the spinner would just spin like that, very frantically.
That's a lovely drift right there. So that's two ways of doing it. The third way is simply casting and retrieving, but very slowly though. So this time I'm gonna cast a little further out just to give me myself a little bit more distance to retrieve. And I'm gonna slowly, very slowly bring that setup back. So if you bring too fast again, the spoon's gonna be sitting on top of the water. Um, by doing this, just very slowly back. And the way, the way you'll get bites, it's not, you won't, well, you, you might feel it a little bit on your rod tip, but that float will go down first before you feel anything. So keep an eye on the float as well. So let's do that a couple more times and I'm gonna try to catch a pink salmon and see if, see if they'll bite. It's a little sunny now, we're about 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, generally, when it's sunny like this, of course they don't, they get a little shy. Um, but there's still a bit of shade on the other side. So maybe there, there, were, there are fish that, that will be willing to bite over there. So you can see the advantage of using a float, uh, using the float above the spoon. Um, you know, without the float, what's going to happen is, you know, your your line's going to be under the water. It's going to get caught up in the current. It's very very hard to control. This way, your line between the float and your rod is going to be above the water. So it's way easier to control that spoon, and uh, you can actually slow down the presentation and just give that fish a couple more seconds to feel the bites. Okay, right at the end. So what I like to do is kind of press my thumb onto the bait caster right now and just let it sit there for a few seconds. And uh, you know, a lot of times, sometimes the fish can be following Especially cold, actually, they'll, they'll fold the spoon back, and they'll, they'll, they won't touch it. So, but as as soon as you stop the float from drifting down, that spoon's gonna stop swimming down. So the fish will keep going back. Then they, they kind of get surprised, and then they'll they'll go forward and attack it. So any little changes can surprise the fish and trigger bites. So just there's lots of different ways of playing around uh, with this technique. Well, besides that one bite I had earlier when I was talking, uh, which I missed, uh, that was the only one I had today. And that's fishing for you. Uh, sometimes it works really well, sometimes the fishes don't cooperate. And uh, if you want to get into spoon fishing rivers uh, and never tried it before, definitely give this technique a go. And if you have any other questions regarding this technique or any other fishing techniques, please feel free to ask them. You can do so by asking in this YouTube uh, video, uh, by leaving a comment or you can do so on our Facebook page. And uh, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook for updates. And uh, if you need more information on fishing in British Columbia, please go to our website at fishingwithrod.com. And uh, on the website, there's a variety of articles on fishing techniques, fishing locations, updated fishing reports, and there's a big discussion forum for people to uh, participate in. So until next time, good luck fishing.